as you as you boys know, I'm a big fan of Jason Schreier. Oh, like, really? Ooh, <laughs> didn't know that. I look like I'll 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 go on the Jason Schreier fan club, and I'll just say more fan so club. like he's you're like the secretary <laughs> of the fan club. No, but like, like, is he paying you, or do you just have a <laughs> no, crush on him? I don't not. get it. He never returns. Does, he, does your wife know about this? He never returns my DMs. Um, <sighs> so like, I'll, I'll say this though, I, I personally like. The politics thing it doesn't gel that well with me with him, but his writing and to me he's clearly like it's not even a competition in terms of who's the best journalism a journalist in in gaming like he's yeah so far ahead of everyone else it's not funny so he feels like he's not a blogger it feels like he's an actual journalist at that well he is a journalist that's he's yeah, like that's a, what I mean like a proper journalist yeah. not just some blogger who happens to write for a website. Yeah, and like, like say the reviews that I do on a certain <laughs> on, on a website, right? I'm not a journalist. I'm just no. I'm a shitty blogger that just does a bunch of articles. Yeah, no, we're not we're not journalists, that's for sure. Um and you know, journalism itself has kind of gone down the drain, unfortunately, because of the clickbait and you know, views kind of nature of news these days. But he's like an old school journalist, but focuses on gaming, which is amazing to me. Huh. Uh his original book, could have been that. It's true. His original book, Blood, Sweat and Pixels, back in twenty seventeen. Easily the best video game book available. Um, I mean, there's very few games I think are at, even at that quality level. I always mention Masters of Doom. That's an amazing book. Well worth reading. Um, so, yeah, for me, I've been really anticipating Press Reset. So that's his his next book that's coming out on the 11th of May. I'll look to read it in that week that it comes out and then review it on the show. At least it will be two weeks after it comes out at the latest, I reckon. Uh, and this was actually an excerpt. So we'll just chat about the excerpt from the book. It got published on Bloomberg. I think this was one of the only articles that doesn't have the paywall on Bloomberg from what I understand. Cause every way I, think I had a paywall. I had oh, a did paywall. you? <laughs> yeah, I had a paywall. Mm. That goes mm. kind of against it being an excerpt for the book and promoting the book. So I'm um, hearing this for the first time. Okay. So yeah, essentially the piece covers the downfall of 38 studios. So 38 studios being Kurt Schilling's, studio that he developed him being much much more famous as being a baseball player still in america if you ask who's who's kurt schilling they would say oh he's like the guy who won the red sox uh you know and broke the curse for the red sox the average person on the street oh he's the guy that founded 38 studios and they went under (laughs) and they heard rhode island like millions well it's one of it's one of those really weird things that i think if you ask people in gaming they'd be like oh yeah that that real mess with kingdoms of, of amala or something like that i yeah. think that that's probably what they would say <laughs> like did you know kurt Schilling as a baseball player no i'm, I'm not gonna say i did no yeah so i knew him as a, a red sox was he the dude that threw that ball that hit that bird no okay and why well, i'd believe he wasn't <laughs> like i not really know what you're referring <laughs> he's, to. he's famous for playing uh, the article mentions this i don't know this off the top of my head but for playing with like really a bad ankle injury and like blood on his socks during like oh Jesus yeah, oh, like, yeah the World he, Series game or something. wait did he play for the Red Sox during that period? Correct. Nice. Yes, he won. He broke the curse. He broke the curse. Um, and then then you know Boston has gone on to win like everything and be one of the most dominant towns in uh, America. But anyway, parking that. So yeah, this article I, I really loved it. You know, at a high level, just to sort of run through a bit of the timeline. So. You know, he, he baseball players get insane amount of money. He was a pitcher, so he probably made 150 million bucks over his career, and My he caramba. got really into video games. And if, to me, the way I look at it, and it's very disrespectful to him, but it feels very much like a big kid who has given a lot of money, <laughs> and he's like, "Video games, I can make a video game," and he's like, "All right, I'll start a studio." And one thing that you know, is in this article and actually articles at the time. So he must've been telling a lot of people, he said, you know, I'm rich, but I want to get Bill Gates rich. <laughs> so essentially this was his idea to become quote unquote, Bill Gates rich. So, you know, I don't know, maybe I'll run through it quickly, Sweeney, but it's like they started the studio. He, in the end, put about 50 million bucks of his own money in. He was based in Massachusetts and then Rhode Island approached him with a deal where they would give him a loan, you know, a hell of a lot more money. I think it was like $75 million loan to move the whole operations to Rhode Island. They took that deal. And then what that then meant was people who were working at the studio had to move to Rhode Island. The studio did 
a questionable deal with employees to say, okay, if you move, we'll cover your mortgage until someone sells the house, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, this was, you know, around the time of, you know, very poor, like very bad, like, you know, home prices in America because of the uh, global financial crisis in 2008. So this was roughly around 2012. And then, you know, the studio ultimately went under, owing a huge amount of money. 100, and, 150 million. Yeah, 150 million in debt. In debt. Damn. And, you know, like, so people lost their jobs, you know, lots of people weren't paid, they didn't get their final paychecks. And then to cap it off, people who took this mortgage deal were in this crazy situation where they didn't have the house, but they still had to pay back the bank and they potentially had other houses in Rhode Island, which is like just pretty horrifying, to be honest, to be yeah. set in that situation. Yeah, it was horrible because, you know, as part of that contract, the... 38 Studios were like, okay, we're going to assist you in selling your property while you move into this new property in Rhode Island. And then because of, you know, the cause in the cause in the contract basically said in, you know, if there was financial dire situation, then essentially that's probably null and void that, that arrangement that that essentially meant that, you know, some of those, their old houses didn't get sold. So suddenly they've got those double mortgages. It's insane. It's just, and yeah. no jobs because it's the company. Exactly, because Rhode yeah. Island, you know, they were the, going to be the first big studio there. There was no game yeah. jobs in gaming there. So then suddenly it's like, well, what do you do? You know, it's crazy. Yeah, it's like Rhode Island, you know. It, yeah, it'd be like moving to the Northern Territory. And they, you know, they've got some deal, they do it all. And then that ends and you're like, well, I'll definitely not be able to get a job here. So I need to move again. And I've got another house and... I it was just a really, really interesting article. I don't, I don't know what like uh, other things jumped out at you, Swinny. Look, this you know a lot of this information is has been well known for a long time, but yeah, the to hear the more personal stories. I think they had like the art director talking. Uh, they've mm. Shrey interview has interviewed a whole bunch of people for this, um, and he had Kurt Schilling lined up, and he pulled out at the last uh, minute. Yeah, and that would have been fascinating. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Let's let's say better Kurt Schilling these days the better but um basically it's it's a great preview to press reset i'm really looking forward to it i've actually got um finally bought myself blood sweat and pixels i'm going to read that before this comes out can i borrow it mike you just did the thing we said before like i haven't even got it yet (laughs) all right (laughs) i'll lend it to you when i'm done with it um but, I'm yeah. really interested to see what you think of that book. And it's it's such an interesting story for me as well as a fan of Amalur, Kingdoms of, mm. of Amalur as well. Mm-hmm. And knowing, like, seeing the finished product of that game, the only game released under their banner, even though they didn't technically make it, um, and loving that game, the fact that a lot of people were very hurt by the process that brought brought us to that game as well. So it's kind of like it shows you the other side of what the industry is really. And it just shows you in gaming, it's, you know, this is also why people drive pre-orders so much because to be able to get cash into the studio before the game has actually come out is so critical and why, you know, like everything's built around how do you get pre like, you know, pre-order money in like, because it makes such a difference. Mm. Um, yeah, no, look, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this book. I should just say quickly, I, I ordered Ask Iowata um, just around the former Nintendo president who passed away. Uh, it's just a collection of his interviews. I actually got it through some other means because it's actually been released in the States, but not here in Australia, which is, I, I don't know, I find that extremely obnoxious and frustrating. Uh, so I'll look to cover that next week or the week after because uh, I'll read through that. It's only 140 pages or so. So that's a pretty quick, pretty quick read. Cool. All right, let's get into the next story. 